Hey everyone, and welcome to the Panic Room, eight to 10 minutes of pure panic here for your lockdown time. And guess what day it is today? It's the same day it was yesterday. How do you feel about having Groundhog Day today, David? The same day again. Well, every day for me is new and fresh and revitalizing. Every day is a new experience. Every day is the beginning of the rest of my life. Every day is a new hat day. Yes, you've got a hat on today. Why have you got a hat on today, David? Uh, because somebody complained about my forehead. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised at the level of intelligent comments we get on the chat line. I'm, I'm looking forward to some people who can speak English and ask, uh, who've kind of got over the sweary stage and can actually ask something intelligent. But so I thought I'd wear a hat to inspire okay. these people. Yeah. Well, I noticed some things don't change and uh, trolls are still trolls. But, and Wilson hasn't changed. He's still here. He still hasn't been used. So it's good to have him, but it, it does feel a little bit like Groundhog Day. There's a couple of articles I want to talk about today. Uh, but the key issue today is what happens when it seems like every day is going to be the same and um, every day is going to be the same. Uh, it feels a bit like uh, we are living as a, a Groundhog Day. And an article yesterday in the uh, Sydney Morning Herald uh, said that working parents are at breaking point supervising home lessons. And that's in week one. So the kids are at home, they're working from home, and it's going into meltdown already, and we're into week one. How do you mm -hmm. think this is going to go uh, in, the, in the long term? Well, I don't think it's going to go well. I mean, I'm thankful that in our own particular panic room, uh, it's myself and Annabelle, um, I feel that we are particularly privileged. I really do. I feel, my, my, my heart goes out to a woman in a council apartment with you know, three kids whose play park is closed mm. um, and expected to self-educate I, I, or to homeschool. I, for me, it's not going to go well. And, uh, you know, all, all joking aside, I, I just have so much empathy. I, as we've said before, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of tension and hassles within homes. And, you know, it's not really helped by all the cute videos of families singing. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not all the no. Bon Trap family. No, that's true. And I think that's, um, that's part of the issue that as, as this takes its toll on people, uh, there'll, be some, there'll be social unrest or there'll be people just um, frustrated with things. And uh, there's not going to be that sense of camaraderie that perhaps there is at the start of something like this when you settle in. It's like yeah. at the start of the war when everyone said this will be over in six months and it took six years. Yeah. Or I, I think, you know, you're... A Groundhog Day thing is actually pretty accurate because initially there's a kind of novelty. So when we started off with all of this, I heard people basically going, oh, this is great. Two weeks at home, it'll be like Christmas and, you know, endless Netflix movies and takeaway food and so on. And what they forget is that after two weeks at Christmas, you are desperate to get back to work, even if your work's horrible, you know. And I just think that... <laughs> Yeah. I, I do think that mental illness and, you know, our mental health is going to be severely affected by this. So I think it's good to get a routine. Um, our day does have, I mean, you think you have to impose a routine and mine and animals, we, we do have a routine. Uh, I find the days are actually going quite quickly. I'm, I'm not being bored. I, personally, I've never had a boring day in my life, at least since I became a Christian. So um, I don't yeah. expect to be bored in this panic room. No, but I read. Uh, I like reading. Yeah. Look, I, I think there's, I've obviously got a son doing schoolwork and a daughter doing theological education and she's at home as well. And, mm. but another thing we noticed is that people are shifting, uh, shifting what they're actually uh, thinking about. So the immediate thing hasn't happened uh, as much as, you know, people aren't buying a bog roll as much as they used to. But an article in the Australian yesterday that said that the buying pattern of panic buying has shifted to booze and Bunnings, and Bunnings yeah. being the big uh, DIY warehouse. So people are bunkering down to drink a lot. 
and to uh, build a panic room perhaps in their house or yeah. do some renovations. So what is that saying about us uh, while, why we're doing those things? Well, number one, we are social beings. So we like to go out where there are other people. I think that's hugely important. I mean, I went out to see someone today. I, I'm, I confess that. And it was well worth doing. We kept our social distance. We sat and had a coffee together. Uh, there was only two of us, you know, uh, and it was so worth it. But we love, so Bunnings, that's one thing. Number two is I think that we think redemption is brought through buying stuff. It gives us significance. It, you know, it, it helps. Um, and also... <laughs> Bunnings is one of, well, I actually, I'm going to say Bunnings is one of the few places left open, but that's not true. I, I went to a, a Weber barbecue shop. I couldn't believe it was open. It was open. And I actually said this to the woman, this is so Aussie. I said, why are you open? And she said, well, we've got plenty of space in here. And she says, you can't close yeah. a barbecue shop. We are an essential service in Australia. And I think that's yeah. true. You know, yeah, so that's true. I think it's because we're social beings. And I think it's because I think it's also because we're creative beings. Uh, and I think it's because we're fundamentally capitalist beings now. Yeah, there's truth to that. We don't know what to do to fill in the gap of not uh, I shop, therefore I am, I suppose, at some level. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's hard. And now you can do that online. Uh, though Adam Crichton, the business editor of The Australian yesterday, was saying that this is going to hit the young people hardest over the next 20 to 30 years because before the conversation was about how uh, we can't afford a house and uh, we can afford to maybe go out and have a good time but we can't afford a house now it seems like that house thing is just going to be a pipe dream for lots of people because the economy for young people specifically i mean is it going to be resentment yeah i do i think it's going to impact young people and i think that it's going to impact the poor i mean i keep going on about this but i have to keep going on about it because mm. Um, if you're in the gig economy, you're going to lose out. If you're poor and work, you know, if you're working class and you're young, I mean, you, you are, you know, really, really going to struggle with the cost of paying for this. Because there are some people think, oh, this is great. We'll do this. We'll give people all this money. And then it won't cost us anything. Well, I'm sorry, if you ran your house like that, you'd see that that's not how it works. And I get a bit frustrated, Steve. Because... I'm not supposed to run my house. What was that? I'm not supposed to run my house like that. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, I mean, um, you know, I do think Jesus has a lot to teach us about how, you know, we view tomorrow, how we use our wealth and all the rest of it and how we have to be uh, responsible as well. I just think there's a whole air of unreality. It seems to me that the only sane people in the world are you and me in the panic room. We're the only ones not panicking. Well, it's interesting that you say... Um, for the, the Bible, for a book that talks about eternity, also talks about the immediacy where it says in Proverbs 27, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. And here yeah. we are. But Jesus, flip, Jesus flips that and says, don't worry about tomorrow either because yeah. there's enough evil today. So you don't boast about it and you don't worry about it. Those are uh, two sides of the same coin. Yeah. I actually think that there's something really key there and it's important for people to grasp. Sufficient for the day is the evil thereof, is the old King James Version. And I think as we're in our Groundhog Day, as each day we're in the same place, maybe it is good for us to think, how am I going to get through this day? What am I going to do this day? And I think planning for what lies ahead or worrying about what lies ahead is not really a good way to go. And I think far too, much of it, far too many of us are being incapacitated by fear and worry rather than by legislation or illness. Do you agree? Yes, I think that's true. The fear and worry thing hits us hard. And uh, I, I want to, you know, we've had 20 deaths in Australia. That's not a massive amount, but we're worried about what's going to happen. So we have to make precautions, I guess. And that's what we want to do. But at the, the flip side is where we can be hamstrung with fear and mm -hmm. other things can happen. So, uh, for example, um, a friend is going to come and socially distance from me today to talk urgently because he's just been uh, diagnosed with a late stage cancer. Yeah. Uh, coronavirus is sitting out there, but the rest of life is going on and the rest of things that, uh, that cause people great illness and, uh, and great trauma are happening still. We can't cut those things out. Absolutely. And I think, listen, before we go, I'm going to let you say good, goodbye, everyone. But let me um, just suggest this or ask this as well. I, it's it's quite amusing to me that Daniel Andrews, the, the premier or the prime minister of Victoria, has just cancelled hookup culture. 
because he said if you're not married or living together, you shouldn't go and see your partner. Um, I mean, it's like they're, they're now trying to outdo each other to see who can come up with the most draconian measures. Um, but I just think it's very, very interesting how so many different things are being challenged and cancelled. And maybe it is a good time for us to reflect upon the things that we live for and to think about our, our eternal and our spiritual condition. I, I, you know, the verse you mentioned, Jesus's verse, I, I can't think of a more important verse for us to reflect yeah. on than don't worry about tomorrow for today. Each day has enough trouble of its own. But exactly. anyway, I'm, I'm going to say goodbye, but what do you have to say to finish off? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, yeah, I've got to finish. It is April the 1st, so don't be a fool. It says in the Bible uh, that the fool says in his heart there is no God. Uh, lockdown might be a time to reconsider that if you haven't before. But we'll say goodbye for now and we'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place, uh, same Groundhog Day. Okay, great stuff. See ya. Yeah.